We are back at the beautiful Orby, and this is going to be our scene today for a Litchi walkthrough. Let's just land the drone and go through the main flight screen. There's no reason for exhausting the battery while we're doing this. 17 meters altitude. So this is basically the main flight screen. And if we start in the upper left corner, you have all the flight modes available. There's follow, orbit, panel, focus and track that is currently available. Waypoints are not available yet, but they will be added shortly. I'll be covering all the flight modes in the next episode. And if that video has not been released yet, I would highly recommend that you subscribe to the channel by hitting the subscribe button below as well as the bell. So you don't miss out when that is going to be released. Next to the number of satellites, you have the battery level of the remote. Behind the green bar in the center, you have the current flight mode. Right now, it's just showing that you have GPS lock, meaning that you have sufficient uh, satellites to take off. Next to this, you have the flight modes, and that can be toggled by simply tapping on top of this, like we know from the other app. If you tap on this, you can switch between the three flight modes that are available for the Mavic Mini. Next to the flight mode selector, you have the video signal strength that is currently 100%. So that's what we need. Next to that, we have the battery indicator. And that one is a slider that will allow us to set the minimum battery level. The only issue is that I don't think this feature is supported because it jumps back to 20, <laughs> regardless which setting that we are putting it to. So if I tap it again, it jumps back to 20. I simply don't think that DJI has decided to support that feature. Then we have the gear wheel here that uh, gives us all the settings that can be custom set for the drone. Let me just go through those uh, a little bit later in the video once we are done uh, with looking at the flight screen. Below the top bar, we have a share icon. This uh, will allow you to uh, stream to Facebook Live, something called Litchi View, which I really don't know, but at least there's an option for streaming and to doing this live to Facebook. Next to the share icon, you have the option to enable VR mode. So if you have one of those uh, Samsung glasses uh, that where you can put in your phone, this is the way to enable that so you can fly around and enjoy the VR view. Below these, uh, the share button and the VR option, you have the toggle key so you can toggle between photo and video mode. Below the record button, you have a really nice menu with a lot of drone candy that I would like to go through to show you. You can't believe the number of options that you're getting in here. But let's just finish the main screen before we go through that. Below, there's the map. You can toggle the map toggle between the map setting and the camera view simply by tapping it you can also minimize the map completely so it just becomes a small plus in the lower uh, right corner in the lower left corner you have all your flight parameters uh, the, like uh, your altitude your distance from home your speeds and uh, all the necessary information that is uh, is really nice to know you have the histogram that will help you set the exposure of your footage. At least it will help you to determine if the exposure is correct. In the, the center of the screen here, you have the basic camera settings listed. So you have always access to see what modes that your camera have been put in. So that's really nice to have access to that basic information there while you're recording. Another little detail is that you can uh, move the gimbal up and down by touching the screen. but. I don't think that's very smooth. I like doing it on the wheel instead. The wheel is a lot, it's a much better option to tilt it up and down. Let's switch the flight mode back to normal position hold by tapping the icon. Let's just go through the camera settings menu here. There are some really, really interesting settings in here. There's the expo settings here. They, those will give you access to automated control where you can adjust the exposure compensation value when it's in auto. So you can underexpose the footage like we normally like to do. So let's just simply slightly underexpose it. You could also flick it into manual mode where you will get access to the three standard parameters like the ISO, shutter speed and aperture. The aperture f2.8, you can't touch that or can't change that because it's a fixed aperture drone. So there's no way of uh, modifying that. So the only two parameters you can change in manual mode is the ISO. So you can change the ISO so you can brighten up the image like that and you can change the shutter speed, making it slower or making it faster. 
exactly like you can do on the normal uh, DJI uh, Fly app. So in that case, they are not that big of a difference. Let's just put it in auto again and have it slightly underexposed like this. So there's not a big difference there. And uh, also the histogram, you can enable that or disable that. That's pretty nice. Now we are starting to see some differences uh, between the Ligi app and the DJI Fly app. And that is the photo settings. The possibility to switch between 4.3 and 16.9, there's nothing new in that. But under the capture mode, you have auto exposure bracketing. And that means that you can take three pictures automatically at different exposure levels. One that is overexposed, one at neutral exposure, and one that is underexposed. And the special part about the implementation that they have done here is that you can choose how many stops it needs to be over and underexposed. And that's a really, really nice option because the wider you can make it, the more dynamic range you can introduce into your footage. So let's just it put it at over and two stops exposed. plus minus. And if I switch it here into photo mode and take a picture, you would see that it takes three pictures at different exposure levels. And that's a huge difference with its two stops to either side. Remember, one stop is either doubling or halving uh, the amount of light that hits the sensor. So that's uh, some really nice settings for the photo. Under the video, you have the video sizes uh, that is also uh, known to be available. You have uh, 1080p up to 60 frames per second, and the maximum resolution is uh, 2.7K at 30 frames per second. So there's nothing new there. There's the option for the video caption, uh, and uh, those of you that don't know this option is that it can add uh, your current uh, settings of the camera as subtitles to your video. Let us just keep that on. There's a white balance. We can set this uh, as auto, we can set this as sunny, or we can set this as cloudy because it is mostly cloudy today. I like to use that as a fixed value because uh, then it don't change uh, depending on the light conditions when I fly around and I don't want to do that. Then there's another really, really interesting setting uh, that sets this app apart on settings. And that is that you have the option to adjust the sharpness of the image. Let's just start the Recording video. Recording started. So let's just put it at zero. Let's see if we can even see a difference. So uh, let's see. Now we go to minus three in sharpness and go to plus three. I don't know if it makes much of a difference uh, when we are sitting here, but it's nice that you can do that. You can uh, alter the contrast. Let's just play around with that. So you can see now it's uh, decontrasted and I can go the other way, it's highly contrasted. And the last one is the saturation. If I put that up, the colors are being desaturated. And uh, if I go to the other way, it's being really saturated. So in that way, I can make a custom color profile for my Mavic Mini. That's something you can't do with the standard DJI Fly. Let's try that once we are airborne. There's uh, the auto exposure lock, so you can lock the current exposure level. You can adjust the gimbal in case it's uh, not completely level with the horizon. You can uh, change the gimbal setting. So if I do this, it tilts to one side. And if I do this, press the 0 0.2, then it tilts to the other side and I can reset it back to center. Then I have reset of the camera settings, so if I just reset those, everything is back to normal. So let's uh, just make sure that we have what we need when we go out here, that's the underexposure of the image. Okay, let's go slightly underexposed. The photo setting, we go under A, B. Let's just do a two offset up and down. Let's uh, make sure that the video is set to the highest possible resolution. It's 2.7K, yes. The start settings here. I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep them at neutral, maybe to make it a little bit pop a little bit more the footage, we will oversaturate it. That's another thing that I, you can adjust the exposure where you wanna, want it to expose against. So if I move it here, I can just tap on the screen. And this is where the exposure lock comes in really handy. So if I go down here and say exposure lock, it will keep this exposure. So regardless of where I tap on the screen, it will keep the same exposure. Let's jump onto the gear wheel before we fly out and do some stuff here. So uh, there's all the things that you could imagine. Units, uh, map engine, Google Maps, uh, map type satellite. That means that it, you are getting a, not a map, but you're getting a satellite photo. Can show the geo warning zones. Yeah, there's some interesting things down here. It can enable the GPS coordinates and we can also show 
the vertical speed when it's flying up. So now we have added a, a few extra parameters that will allow us to see that. And uh, we can uh, see the app version, firmware version, vertical flight controller. Doo -doo -doo. There's a find my aircraft function that will allow you to find it in case that you lose your drone. I hope you will never use that function. You can restore it, reset all settings. There's a go home altitude in meters and maximum altitude. That one needs to be set in this case because we are outside the city for 100 meters. Go home altitude is 40, that's nice. There's dynamic home point. That is a really interesting feature that many of you have requested. Especially if you're on a boat, you wanna enable that because then uh, the, the drone will come back to the position of the controller instead of the takeoff position. So that would that's really, really nice to have that option. Something that DJI has not uh, made available. There's uh, what, what does it need to do in case that it loses signal. There's the options that are available, land, return to home or hover. And uh, I would prefer that it returns to home as it is right now. There's the option to enable landing protection. I would assume that that checks with the sensors, uh, the only sensors that are on the Mavic Mini, the sensors uh, that are going downward, if the surface below it is suitable for landing. And it's doing that with the vision positioning system, and that will help it land more or less precise. And there's the calibrate compass function. That's nice. That uh, I actually didn't think that that was uh, available inside the app, but uh, I kind of learned that now. <laughs> there's a gimbal mode where you can uh, do different stuff with your gimbal there's one that gives the option to extend the gimbal above the horizon with 30 degrees and there's the gesture control so you can operate the gimbal from the main flight screen by simply just touching another nice thing that many of you would appreciate that's the auto record during takeoff it means that they will start the recording when you're taking zero off meters out of and that is a really, really zero nice meters feature distance. because sometimes recording started you can make it auto stitch the panoramas. That's also a very nice thing. So you will have a nicely stitched panorama mm -hmm. inside uh, on your then. camera roll. When I guess that depends on your phone. Done. Cache video, photos, uh, photo preview, and all that stuff. And you can also get the zebra stripes on the screen that will show you areas of the footage that is overexposed. Many of you are asking about these uh, zebra stripes. Let's just see if we can provoke them so you can see what I mean. So if I go up here with the gimbal. So I just go here and I all expose it. So these zebra stripes, you're asking what that is for. And that is to show that the footage is all exposed and it's only on the UI. It's not going to be included on the footage on the SD card. Down here there's a section called speech. And this one can, uh, yeah, you can basically make it uh, tell you different things. It can tell you the speed, it can tell you battery feedback, it can tell you distance uh, and all sorts of stuff. I find it a bit annoying that it speaks to you all the time, but if you prefer that, then uh, let's just put it there and uh, you can uh, listen how it is when we're taking off. We still have plenty of battery left. Let's get airborne. Zero meters altitude, zero meters distance. Recording started, five kilometers per hour. 66% battery. Let's just take a look on the other side here. It's definitely a better view than 30 meters altitude. Looking out. Zero meters distance. Zero kilometers per hour. So see, it keeps talking all the time. Battery. We don't want that. So shut up. <laughs> but it's nice. It's nice uh, if you're going to concentrate on different stuff here. Just fly out here. So you get a nice view of the harbor. So this is the FPV mode. This is basically the standard mode. Okay, the saturation may be, be a little bit too much here. So let's just go in here under style settings, saturation, and then just put it to plus one. So now we are getting a company. Let's just put the drone out here somewhere. So they're not feeling disturbed by this. And as you can see here in the back, there is this beautiful Orby Castle. Yeah. Just put that in. So let's try some of the features that are available here. Now, this was the video recording. I can include a reference clip for you. Let's just record 10 seconds for you here. 2.7K. I can make that available through the TechDrone Media website. So let's go in here and play a little bit with the parameters here. We have the style settings. Let's make a separate video with that. So this is the sharpness. So I just put that to a minus three, zero, and plus three. I can do the same with the contrast. Minus three, zero, plus three. And we could do the same with the saturation. Oh, let's just bring it back here. So zero, 
two, and the saturation, minus three, and plus three. That's a bit overdone, so let's just put it at plus one. Stop the video and switch it into photo mode. And uh, remember, now we are taking a picture with the uh, three exposure levels. No, we are not. Let's just go in here and say capture mode. It needs to be A, B, and with the offset of two stops. We want it exposed, just using the in here as the center. Let's take this away. We take the exposure. So now we get three. One that's really overexposed and one that's really underexposed. Let's do one more, just for the sake of it. And then we can jump in and do one where the exposure level is set to a more reasonable level, like plus minus one here. But under and overexposed is only with a single stop. So now we can try and play around with some of the flight modes. So this was part one of my Mavic Mini Litchi app walkthrough. In the next episode, I will cover the different flight modes that is available through the app. Like uh, Active Track, Pano 360, Follow Me Mode and Focus Mode. If the video has already been released, you will be able to access it through this card. I hope you liked this video. If you did, then feel free to give it a like. If you didn't like it, feel free to press the dislike button twice. Thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you around.